friends, welcome to library. Today I have a really nice read um, about our impact um, on our world, our earth, and our use of plastic and how it affects everyone. So this is called One Plastic Bag, Isitu Sise and the Recycling Women of the Gambia by Miranda Paul, illustrations by Elizabeth Zunan. In Dao, Gambia, Isika walks with her chin frozen. Fat raindrops pelt her bare arms. Her face hides in the shadow of a palm leaf basket, and her neck stings with every step. Warm scents of burning wood and bubbling peanut stew drift past. Her village is close now. She lifts her nose to catch the smell. The basket tips. One fruit tumbles, then two, then ten. And the basket breaks. Isitao kicks the dirt. So she was picking fruit on her way home, and it all falls apart. Something silky dances past her eyes, softening her anger. It moves like a flag flapping in the wind and settles under a tamarind tree. Isitao slides the strange fabric through her fingers and discovers it can carry things inside. She gathers her fruits in the bag. The basket is useless now. She drops it, knowing it will crumble and mix back in with the earth, with the dirt. Four goats greet Isitao as Grandmother Mombe emerges from her kitchen hut. Hurry in before the rain soaks your beautiful Mombe! Isitao scurries in, and the grandmother serves spicy rice and fish. Rain drums on the creaking aluminum roof. I broke your basket, Isitao confesses, but I found this. Plastic, grandmother frowns. There's more in the city. Day after day, Isitao watches neighbors tote their things in bright blue or black plastic bags. Children slip water and wanjo from Tiny holes poked in, in clear bags. Market trays fills with minties wrapped in rain, rainbows of plastic. The colors are beautiful, she thinks. She swings her bag high and the handle breaks. One paper escapes, then two, then ten. Esita shakes sand off her papers. Another plastic bag floats by and she tucks her things inside. The torn bag is useless now. She drops it to the dirt, as everyone does. But there's nowhere else to put it. And day after day, the bag she dropped is still there. One plastic bag becomes two, and then ten, then a hundred. Plastic isn't beautiful anymore, she thinks. Her feet step down a clear, cleaner path, and the thought floats away. Years pass, and Isitao grows into a woman. She barely notices the ugliness growing around her until the ugliness finds its way to her. Isita hears a goat crying and hurries toward grandmother's house. Why is it tied up? Where are the other goats? Inside, the butcher is speaking in a low voice. Many goats have been eating these, he says. The bags twist around their insides and the animals cannot survive. Now three of your goats and so many other goats in the village have died. Grandmother Mombe's powerful shoulders sag. Isita must be strong and do something. But what? Isita's feet lead her to the old, ugly road. A pile of garbage stands as wide as grandmother's cooking hut. Mosquitoes swarm near dirty pools of water alongside the pile. Smoke from burning plastic stings her nose. Her feet back away. Goats scamper past. They forage through the trash for food. Her feet stop. She knows too much to ignore it now. Holding her breath, she plucks one plastic bag from the pile, then two, then ten, then a hundred. What can we do, is the to ask her friends. Well, let's wash them, says Fatim pulling out almost soap. Maram grabs a bucket and Incha fetches water from the well. 
Peggy finds clothespins, and they clip the wash bags on the line. As the day is dry, as, as the bags dry, I'm sorry, Isitel watches her sister crochet. Can you teach me? Wow, yes. Her sister shows Isitel the stitches, then hands her a metal tool. Isitel's fingers busy themselves in, out, around. Jerit Jeff, thank you. Isitel finds a broomstick and carves her own tool from its wood. What's that for? Fatim asks. Isitel pauses. She and Peggy have an idea, but what will their friends think? But will their friends think it's crazy? Will the idea even work? Nervously, she plans. She explains the plan. One friend agrees to help, then two, then five. The women cut bags into strips and roll them into spools of plastic thread. Before long, they teach themselves how to crochet with this thread. Nakaligi B? asked Grandmother. How is the work? Nadanka, Nadanka, answers Isitel. Slow. Some people in the village laugh at us. Others call us dirty, but I believe what we are doing is good. The women crochet by candlelight, away from those who mock them. Until a morning comes when they will no longer work in secret. Fingers sore and blistered, Isitel hauls the recycled purses to the city. One person laughs at her, then two, then ten. Then... One woman lays dulce coins on the... Dolasi coins on the table. She chooses a purse that shows it to one friend, then two, then ten. Soon everyone wants one. Isitel fills her own purse with Delasi. She zips it shut and rides home to tell grandmother she has made enough to buy a new goat. When she passes by the pile of rubbish, she smiles because it is smaller now. She tells herself, one day it will be gone and my home will be beautiful. And one day, it was. And the goats are able to roam free again and not have to be tied up. And there's her baby all grown. So this is the author's note. I first traveled to the Gambia, West Africa in 2003 as a volunteer teacher. I had an amazing experience, but something threatened to ruin my memory of it all. The heaps of garbage piled everywhere. The problem seemed too big to fix. Then a friend told me that in a rural village, a woman named Isita Sise was doing something about it. My friend showed me a beautiful purse made from recycled plastic bags, and I vowed to meet Isita. During my third stay in the Gambia in 2007, I finally connected with Isita and visited her home in Nijal. There I interviewed many, many women and girls, including the original Gambian women who had begun the recycling project with Isita a decade earlier. They shared past stories of dead livestock, strangled gardens, and malaria outbreaks linked to the trash. And they also shared new stories of healthier families, better income, and increased self-confidence. Although I wasn't able to include all the details about the women and their project in this book, I believe the story I've shaped captures their spirit and inspirational accomplishments. Today, Nijau is much cleaner, and goats are healthier, and the gardens grow better. Residents from nearby towns travel there to learn the craft of recycling. People from around the world continue to purchase the recycled plastic purses, and the women contribute some of their earnings toward an empowerment center where community members enjoy free health and literacy classes, as well as learn about the dangers of burning plastic trash. In 2012, that center also became the home for the region's first public library. By the time you read this book, I hope that a copy of one plastic book is shelved there and then it will be checked out once, then twice, then a hundred times. Oh, and here's the pronunciation guide. Fatim, Incha, Mbuba, 
Okay, so if you want to learn how to how to pronounce some of the words I mispronounce, and I do apologize, I didn't see the pronunciation, but um, if I should reread it again, I will have my pronunciation guide. Thank you for reading with me today. Have a fabulous